Good morning, it's April 13th, and we're gonna talk about two key areas here. I think number one, the dollar is gonna be what 2023 is all about. And then two, you've probably been listening to a lot of people talking about shorting financials, maybe buying options on financials. Obviously, a lot of the financials start reporting tomorrow in their first quarter earnings season. So we're gonna hit those two things today on the Longbow dashboard. So here on my tab, uh, we're gonna look at two ETFs. We're looking at the UUP, which is the US dollar, and then EEM. So as you can quickly see here is that we've got an oversold on dollar. So people have been betting against the dollar. The dollar is depreciating. And then here you've got an overbought on emerging markets. It's the EEM ETF. And so that's obviously traded in the US. And so they're kind of the you know, opposite sides of the same coin is when the dollar is down, it means that it's less difficult for emerging markets to be repaying their US debt, in, which is uh, denominated in dollars. Uh, so their debt is denominated in dollars. And so you have this kind of um, negative correlation that goes on for the most part. Obviously there's different pockets, you know, different fundamental factors, different macro drivers, but that's called a broad brush that you can take a look at. So if you think that the dollar can keep depreciating, maybe you're on the bandwagon of owning more emerging markets. If you think that this is just temporary as people are getting excited about um, some of the soft inflation prints today, then you gotta be really careful. So if you're just renting the emerging markets uh, trade right now, you know, you got to think about trimming that, hedging it. Um, but if you're full on in, obviously it's not the day to keep buying into emerging markets. We're getting technical overbought signals. The other part of the coin is obviously the, the banking crisis that happened in the past month is still in the forefront of our minds. And we're going to be hearing from the banks starting some, from some big banks tomorrow about deposits and their expectations. There's two things that we're gonna be looking for in the Q&A, not just the comments around deposits, we're gonna be thinking about, are they tightening their lending standards? And then secondarily, are they gonna be talking about regulation? So are we gonna be hearing about the ways in which their profit margins are probably gonna get squeezed by the government in order that we don't have the same repeat um, of issues that we've seen here in the last month? Um, building from what I would call, call it negligent uh, Excel modeling skills at uh, very large institutions. So if we're looking at the XLF, so that's the financial ETF here in the US for the S&P, we're at a neutral, same thing with the regional bank ETF, but let's pull that up a little bit in terms of the trading range. Obviously the white, which is the security price for it has come down since the banking crisis, but we've seen a rebound. People you know, got a little bit scared and then said, okay, you know, the government's stepping in, everything's gonna be okay. But we'd be very cautious on this because you, know, you have a super tight range right here, which means that maybe people don't know what's gonna happen. And you could see another blowout of that range in the white, um, so the security price, really making a move. So if you're listening to Real Vision and Ralph Paul and you're thinking about, you know, when's the time to be uh, shorting these kinds of securities, you know, obviously keep looking at the, the technical sig signals, but we are in a bearish formation, short term and intermediate term. We're in the middle of the range, but the range is super tight. So if you fundamentally have a view, this may be um, a good time, even though it's mid range, to be taking that into consideration. Um, you've obviously seen more of a dislocation in the regional banks, people are more concerned, but you also then saw you know, more of a middling here out in a very, very tight range. So that does get me nervous that the volatility has come down. You obviously wouldn't expect it to be, call it at the height of the, um, the banking concerns, that type of volatility and that type of wide of a range, but this seems pretty darn tight. You know, it seems like over here when people think they know it's under control, um, going into earnings season again, I'd be pretty cautious, you know, but you've got, you know, huge short interest on this, on this ETF. So I would rather be, you know, if I'm going to be shorting, uh, doing individual securities, so doing your homework and shorting individual securities versus the ETF, which might be just an easier play that people did because they didn't want to do the work. Um, and let's look back at the XLF, you know, you're at the 11% short interest range again, not something that I'm going to love um, to be shorting. You're going to be wanting to do your homework if you're adding big banks into that. And uh, if you want a little, I guess, um, egg, you can go look at the, my Twitter account. Uh, we just posted some numbers from CBRE on the US, uh, sorry, the San Francisco office market. 
which, you know, spoiler alert here is not doing very well. So you can think about, are there some big banks that have been thought of as secure, which might have residential loans and office um, leases um, tied to the bank that might not be doing as well as other places um, that maybe shouldn't be with the same broad brush as a JP Morgan in terms of being a secure area that we might not find for another couple of quarters has um, more problems than people expect. So that's it for today. We'll be talking tomorrow. Lots of earnings tomorrow for the big banks. So um, stay tuned and we'll keep you informed.